Hey Fabulous DIYers, it's Deanna Tabois here and in this video I'm going to show you how to sew this sequined geometric mermaid gown. So let's begin. Okay, so I got this gorgeous, beautiful sequin fabric at my local fabric store in the garment district in NYC. I didn't know if I wanted a lot of it because I wasn't sure what to do with it. So I got one yard, but I ended up going back to get another yard. So we're going to work with two yards and I'm going to kind of freehand this tutorial. Now I'm working with two yards of power mesh. This fabric is a bit stiff. I got three yards of this cool studded cord taping that's going to be used for my straps of the dress an exposed zipper to edge up my style of the dress i'm using bias binding to clean up all my finishes and this horse hair to finish the hem of my gown okay so i'm going to be working with the puff sleeve v-neck bodice that i draped several months ago i'm going to link it up here if you guys want to see that tutorial um in that tutorial i did two darts but this time i decided to do one dart so I went ahead and just cut out my pattern and just decided to just eliminate the other dart since I didn't have a lot of muslin I just went ahead and just cut out the most important part because I'm just going to be using the front and the lower back portion of the bodice so that way I don't really necessarily need the top shoulder of the back portion so here I'm going to draw a line from my neckline all the way to the back neckline of the bodice and I want to have a v-neck but strappy style so I went ahead and just cut off the shoulder part of that um, bodice and here you can see me cutting through the pattern or the bodice so I can have that v-shaped neckline So as you can see it looks like this I gotta make sure the fit is correct so I decided to add a dart here which will be disregarded when I transfer this pattern onto paper and I'm just doing this just to make sure that the top upper bodice part of the dress will fit nice So once you've decided how you want to shape your neckline, here as you can see this is what it will look like. I'm going to go ahead now and transfer it onto paper. So now I'm going to separate the pattern pieces and as you can see the back has a dart which I'm going to leave in place because I'm not going to remove that. I want my whole back piece to be one whole piece and not separated. So here I'm just going to draw in my half an inch seam allowance at the center back line. And then just separate the patterns so I can prepare it to transfer onto paper. And once you've completed, I went ahead and gave it a good press so that way I can get the most use of my pattern and the accuracy. And now I'm going to transfer it onto paper. And once you've completed all that, the pattern pieces will be ready for you to transfer onto fabric. So here are all my pattern pieces. For the skirt portion of my gown, I decided to use the pattern piece that I created and draped months ago as well, the, the mermaid gown. And I'm gonna use the skirt portion of this pattern. So since I had indicated the waistline, I'm gonna just fold my pattern down to the waist mark and cut it out on inexpensive fabric to create my pattern. As you can see, I connected the back portions together to have a complete back portion and I connected the fronts together, the fronts of my patterns together to have a complete front pattern because I want to cut the front portion on the fold and the back portion two pieces. Now for my front, I wanted it to also continue into the bodice of the top portion of the dress. So I just used the abdomen part of my bodice and just connect it to the top part of my skirt. Now the top part of my skirt is just a continuation from the waistline, so it is also the same continuation for the 
upper bodice of my bodice. So I'm just going to connect it and place a tape so to continue it. And as you can see, the edge is a little extended from the skirt part. So I'm just going to cut that out when um, I cut it out into fabric so that way it can be all evened. And this is the freehand part. So as you can see, I have one yard of my fabric already and I folded it. But since the pattern is geometric, I want it to, it to be even. And as you can see, that is extended over because the way the 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 salesperson had cut the fabric he didn't cut it to make sure that it was going to be even on both sides so I kind of lost a little bit of that fabric portion and I can't utilize everything so I'm going to take my skirt pattern and place it against the fold of the fabric as you can see the skirt hem is extended from the edge of that other end of the fabric which I'm going to have to go ahead and make my adjustments now at the knee of the skirt you can see that the fabric wants to fold and do its thing so i'm gonna let it do its thing and i'm gonna fold it down and pin it into place so that way it um gives me a nice flare when it's come for me to um, cut out the pattern so here as you can see i'm basically cutting it out um, with the pattern in place the waist pattern paper in place and i'm going to take it all the way to the bottom of the skirt here I'm cutting out the upper portion of my bodice and I'm just going to basically cut it where I feel like it's going to match up and give me a geometric sign. And as you can see these are the pattern pieces that are cut here and I also cut it out on my, para, my power mesh fabric. So here's the front portion of the skirt. I want to do a lining. Uh, for the skirt, but since I don't have a lot of power mesh fabric, I'm going to do a short skirt version of my gown skirt. So here I'm cutting it out. So it's about mid thigh. That's where I'm stopping my underlining. And then I should have a folded piece for the front and I also cut it out for the back portion of the skirt as well. So now I have my bust fabric cut out. I'm going to go ahead and pin my dart into place and then sew it down. So here they are and now it's time for me to place my straps. So I went ahead and measured my straps already. Um, this is the time for you to decide how you want your straps to be. I decided that I want my straps to be like a crisscross design. Um, I was also playing with the design how, of how I wanted it. So I'm basically going to place my straps along the neckline and then I'll show you what it will look like when it's complete. So here I'm pinning my strap into place and I'm going to sew a half an inch at the neckline of that. Then I added another strap um, along the other end of the neckline. But this is what it looks like currently right now. Um, but I later on show you that I added additional straps because I want it to be more edgy. So here I'm going to connect my bust to the front portion of the skirt of the gown. So here, um, as you can see, I already lined the bust. And I'm going to place it at this center point of the skirt portion. And it will look like this, as you can see here, where it meets nicely at the point. So I'm going to pin that into place. And then I'm going to put in my lining on the inside of the front portion and pin that into place. So that way I can stitch all pieces down with a half an inch. So here it is stitched into place and you're going to flip that portion of the lining over towards the inside and this is what it will look like on the outside. So here as you can see I add an additional strap on the outside of the neckline. So I have a total of six straps. You flip it on the inside so this is what it looks like nice and neat. And I went ahead and hemmed the bottom of the front of my lining. So here's the back portion of my skirt. 
I'm going to take the back portion of my upper bodice and sew them together. This is what it would look like. And I decided to bind the edge of my back portion of the dress before inserting my zipper. So I want to have a clean edge. So now I'm going to insert my zippers. And here's what it looked like once you insert it and sewn it. And this is what it looks like on the inside. As you can see, my seams are bind and nice and clean. So I went ahead and did cut out the back portion of my lining, making sure that it's where I want it to be, how long I want it. And just like I did for the back portion of my gown, I did the same thing and pinned the back portion of the upper bodice of my lining to the back of the skirt lining. So it will look like this. So you want to go ahead and stitch it down. I'm going to repeat the process for the other side and you will have two back portion lining and here you can see I hem the bottom with a zigzag stitch and now I'm going to install the back portion of the gown to the front of the dress. So now since my neckline is cleaned at the front portion of my dress, I'm going to have an ex a half an inch extension above that for the back portion at the side seam. So what you're going to do is just pin it to place just to hold it and secure it. And then now I'm going to place my lining, the back portion of the lining, the right side onto the wrong side of the front portion of the lining and connect that at the side seams. And it will look like this. And I can flip the lining onto the wrong side of the back side of the gown, as you see here, so I can get ready to connect it to the zipper. So I'm going to connect the back lining to the zipper, and it will look like this, nice and clean and closed. And on my side seam, I did bind the edge because I didn't want to have the sequins raw because it will be itchy and scratchy, so I wanted to bind it. And after I bind that, now it's time for me to clean the back neck of my neckline of the back. So I inserted my straps at the placement that I wanted it to be. And now I'm going to go in from the inside and connect the back neckline with a half an inch seam allowance stitch. And it will look like this when it's complete, nice and clean. So lastly, now it's time for you to go ahead and do the hem. And here with the uh, horse hair, I'm going to apply it to the edge of my hem finish. So I'm going to pin into place to sew a quarter of an inch seam allowance at that edge. Now once I've sewn that down, it's time for me to flip it inside so that way I can sew it down into place at the top edge of that horse hair. And here I also bind it where it connects together so that way um, it doesn't unravel and fall apart. So I just bind it with some binding tape and just bind it down at the, at the center back seam. And once you have that done, it will look like this. And you can give it a good press to be really nice and neat. And then your gown is ready to wear. So here's the final look. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to see more videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys.